Our next guest runs the nation's largest public pension fund, a fund with a current market value of $380 billion. Calper CEO, Marcy Frost is here. Marcy, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great time to have you here. There are so many questions circulating, and nobody probably has a better feel for this than you do in terms of running a public pension fund, trying to make sure that you get a return yeah. when you're dealing with negative interest rates and central banks lowering rates all the time, what people are calling the new normal. I know that your fund has an assumed rate of return of 7%. How do you do that when there's $17 trillion in negative interest rates uh, in terms of the bonds that are being sold from right. governments? Right. It is uh, quite challenging. And it was in December of 2016 when we actually lowered the discount rate or the assumed rate of return from 75 down to 7 and we have a new chief investment officer, Dr. Ben Meng, and uh, Ben is currently running 7% scenarios as we speak. Wow. And if you think about you know, global equity and equity markets uh, and our asset allocation, basically giving us around 6.1 to 6.2, there's still a delta that has to be made to get to that 7%. And we believe that the private markets are really the only way that we can make up the wow. difference. You, a lot you, of pressure. It, it, it's a huge amount of pressure. And so many people who are counting on this to be able to say, this is our retirement our funds that have been out there. Right. Um, for the last fiscal year, you didn't achieve it, though, 6.7%. Right. Um, yeah. How nervous are you about thinking? And, and by the way, yeah. that's still phenomenal when you look at the rate of return for a lot of markets out there. Exactly. How do you get to that point? What, what are the scenarios you guys are laying out? So multiple scenarios. One of the things that we do, I think we do quite well, is we don't think about short-term market volatility uh, too much, right? We can't overreact to it. We have to think long-term. We're a long-term investor. We're very patient capital. But back to private assets and private markets, we do know that we cannot hit that 7% unless we can get more private equity. But you, you can get some serious diversification at CalPERS, at least, so that we you sure can, can smooth out the, out the bumps. I was just wondering whether... Whether you're mad at central bankers, whether you think Jay Powell's a bonehead, uh, a, a, as a saver. But then again, right. the lower interest rates are, the better maybe your equities do. So uh, are, do, you wish, do you wish they hadn't been cutting? Do you wish that rates were higher around the world? Would it make it easier? Or has it helped with, with your equities? Yeah, as an investor, you know, it's the building blocks of how we build out our asset allocation. And when you're dealing with negative interest rates as the first building block, it makes it extremely difficult to attain So they are that. boneheads. <laughs> I won't go as far as to say boneheads, but I have to think about it from an investor perspective. Do you think they should have been cutting recently? You know, I, th I think they have to pay attention to uh, the inflation. economy and inflation. I think they have to factor in a lot it of things. It is what it is. We, it is right. what it is, and we have to respond accordingly. What about the whole ESG push, which you guys have been a leader on, mm -hmm. but there have been some now real questions about whether that's hit your returns? So we, we don't believe that ESG has specifically hit our returns. We do believe that environmental, social, and governance issues are critically important to the long-term health of the fund. And those are both short-term and long-term risks that we pay very close attention to. So, you know, I think there's been some coverage out there that ESG around divestment yep. versus engagement has really had an impact on the fund. It has cost the fund some money, the, the divestments that have been done around tobacco, for example, and coal. Um, but Has that made you rethink your approach to all of this? Well, I came in three years ago, and it was something that I wanted to rethink immediately. And I think the board, as well as the management of the organization, we believe that we get a lot more out of engagement with companies than we ever will get out of divestment from companies. And the number one reason for that is the moment we take our money away, our, we lose our voice. Mm -hmm. So we have to stay engaged, we have to stay in the markets, and we really have to think about how do we work with these companies in long but should term. you be using the investment dollars of your right. pensioners to have a voice, if you right. will, at the table of certain types of companies? But you're yes. in California. You're, you have to be woke if yes. you're operating in California, <laughs> even at the expense of your poor pension people. I don't know. The, the board of directors has opposed right. moves to divest stocks in private prisons and gun retailers and companies that are tied to Turkey really? because of all That's of right. these well, reasons. That's right. And that's all within the last 18 months. You have a mob outside yeah. your... Your building. We would. Yeah. yeah, our number one focus is two million members need to rely on us for yes. pension and health care. Yeah, that's that's, that's our world. focus. Right. Yeah. Um, just in terms of what you look to with China, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned your new CIO mm -hmm. who comes from a background of investing money there too. Do you look at that yes. as an opportunity or how fraught is that now that we're in the middle of these trade talks? 
Yeah, t tensions are tough. Markets like uh, predictability. We like predictability. We do not like extreme volatility, but you have to look to the emerging markets. Uh, right now, we are not that exposed to China, frankly. Uh, we are exposed you know, less than 2% in our global equity. We have some exposure in private equity, but uh, very small exposure into China today. Marcy, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, we'd love to, to have you. you back. We'd love yeah, to have you back yeah, in a longer so conversation. To talk really? about with this. Crypto yet, Marcy? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. But you said yet. Yes, <laughs> I heard yet. that. Not yet. Okay. Thanks, thank Marcy. You. We yeah, appreciate thank it. Thank you.